Welcome to Mortgage Masterminds. I'm Richard Greaser, VP of Marketing and Sales Boomerang, and my guest is Mark Gordon, CRO at Princeton Mortgage. Mark, great to have you on. Hi, Richard. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, we're, I'm really excited to have you too. Um, so before we get started, I want to just give a quick plug on uh, Sales Boomerang and Mortgage Coach. And in case you don't know what we do, uh, you've been living on a rock under 2017. Sales Boomerang notifies lenders the moment one of their borrowers needs a loan. And uh, Mortgage Coach is the uh, is obviously just like the title, the obvious mortgage coach. And so I would say we are the number one borrower intelligence and conversion platform in lending. If you don't know what we do, reach out to us right now on salesboomerang.com. We'd love to talk to you about how we can help your business. Mark, let's jump into this. Awesome. So I reached out to you because of your post on LinkedIn. Um, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the post and then I'm, I'm going to let you explain a little bit about that and why, why that's such a big deal. It's a big deal to everybody reading it. So it goes like this. Congratulations to the Princeton Mortgage Team on February being our best retail origination month ever in both units and volume. Even better, 82% of those are purchase transactions. Mark, you got to talk to us about that because that caught my attention. I do a lot of these podcasts and a lot of interviews with VPs of lending, chief, you know, chief, chief, chief marketing officers, chief lending officers, chief mortgage, uh, uh, chief revenue officers, and people aren't having that kind of success right now. So please, like, gotta, gotta, we got to dive into this. Well, I, I will say, uh, to, to be fair to some of the people we talked to, I will say that, you know, we're probably, probably we're starting with a smaller base than some of those other companies, obviously being a billion dollar-ish lender, you know, there's, there's uh, incremental improvements can, can kind of be easier to come across potentially than if you're trying to move a, a 12 billion or $15 billion ship in this environment. But, um, you know, we, we set out very specifically, you know, we companies around for 37 years, but when we retooled it four years ago, essentially started the company over and I got here, um, we went out and interviewed, uh, you know, as many top loan officers we could talk to. And we started listening to them about what they wanted. And so um, we built a, you know, a lot of coaching and training for that helps top originators who are maybe doing 50, 60 or $100 million, but aren't living the lives they want or haven't been able to build the system so they know how to build their teams and get themselves out of the work that is kind of what I call the $25 an hour work instead of the $1,000 an hour work of building relationships. And then we built an entire proprietary marketing flow system that if they identify the realtors they want to be in front of, we will keep them in front of those people. And we do that through email, text, social media retargeting, um, direct mail, a lot of direct mail stuff and some, a bunch of those different things. And so the idea was add more loan officers, keep those loan officers, and then improve per person productivity. That's kind of the only, that's not rocket science, right? That's the only way to do this. Um, but, you know, because we have, we have a culture here of radical transparency, where we share everything with our loan officers, including our margins and how our pricing works and the cost of different things, we're able to create real partnerships with them in terms of designing their business that, so that it works better for them and better for us. And in times of turmoil, when things are moving quickly, that enables us to make adjustments in a much faster, easier, and less dramatic way. Because when I can say like, hey guys, here's what's going on with margins, here's the margin compression, here's what's going on, I can share all of that with what, how, what it means for us, what it means for them, and I can get for the whole team to talk about it, then we can adjust very quickly and we can do it in a way where the trust goes both ways and they tell me in this market, we're seeing this, we can make adjustments. And so we work directly with our team um, to deliver them margins and pricing that, that they can that they can make money on and that we can still make money on. And, and we've adjusted accordingly we've been able to do that very quickly. So combined with having those marketing flow systems that even in times where everybody's super busy and running around, we're still in front of those realtors and we're picking up new realtor partners. And then we've been able to add some very impressive loan officers over the last two quarters as well. All of those things have culminated in us going from a business where really uh, two years ago we were we were having close to similar numbers, but we're eighty percent refi to now being able to break through and get to even higher numbers, and now we're eighty percent purchase. That's just awesome. Um, and so, so that's someone who uh, it's a lending company who saw in advance the writing on the wall where the you know where the market was going and you guys pivoted and you're there and uh, and, and you're successful you can see it in the numbers it's amazing well um one of the things i want to just quickly clarifying question i just want to ask a lot of the talk especially towards the end of last year was that kind of retail was slowly going to be dying over time and that the model would move way more towards uh, direct to consumer. And so you want to talk about that real quick because these what you just posted here does not speak to that at all you know 
there's always new, co- they've been predicting the death of the retail loan officer for as long as I've been in the industry. I got in 2005, and I think probably back to the first dot com era, we've been hearing about this, this disruption. You know, people no longer needed their stockbroker, they were no longer needing their loan officer. What we've seen very consistently, and in every piece of data that I've seen even recently, is that 70% of people still find their realtor through their sphere of influence, and 70% of those people still find their loan officer as a referral from their realtor or their sphere of influence. And so that hasn't really changed. And yes, you have huge companies raising tons of money all the time to try to go after that other 30% or, in their opinion, expand the pie. And, and it does work to a certain extent. If you raise billions of dollars and go and buy the market like better, better.com did, you can get a bunch of market share and a bunch of attention. But can you make money in a normalized market? So far, the answer has been no. And you saw the same thing with Compass Real Estate. They're out there buying real estate agents left and right. But at the end of the day, they're losing their shirts. And so, and, and last year was a year that everybody in the mortgage industry made money. And so, hey, let's all go public and we'll tell everybody that this is, we have a secret technology advantage or this thing or that thing that's going to get us there. By the way, every one of those companies' stock prices is down 70 or 80% from the peak right now, because it turns out there is no secret. And one of the coolest things about it is now that we, now that they're public and you go in and see their financial information, even as a billion dollar lender, we're getting the same execution that they are. I mean, there's, there is no magic bullet or secret to being bigger. And that's why, you know, if you look back at the mortgage industry every 10 years, you look at the top 10 companies and half of them are new and they came out of nowhere. And it's because it is at some point a pretty even playing field if you have the, the finances in the beginning and you've run a good business, you can make money and uh, and you can grow. And you've seen with companies like Movement and, and other companies that like, you know, built a really good business, did it profitably and did it through distributed retail. And so um, that's that's the route that we're choosing to go with, with our growth. Yeah, man. Um, Mark, I think the word I'm hearing is sustainability, right? Like at the end of the day, those, those business models, those flash in the pan, kind of huge, huge venture and, and private equity backed models, just this sounds like they haven't worked out the fundamentals, right? Lending is lending's not that easy, right? You got to be able to do it for a while and grow sustainably. The real secret is being able to navigate market cycles, Yeah. right? The, every year I've been in mortgages, it's been the first year of this new thing that we're dealing with, right? And it's some it's something every single year, right? We, it, all you hear is we've never seen this before. We've never seen this before. And I don't, I don't make predictions, but I will predict this, that next year will be something we've never seen before. And the companies that have the strategy where they can see reality the best and adjust the fastest are going to be the ones that succeed. Yeah, I think that makes total sense. I actually I hear it from veterans in our company who who used to be LOs and I talk to other folks who all say the same thing who've been in the industry 10 to 20 years. They're like, "Look, it comes and goes, right? This is that you just you, you got to get through the times, you know, the bad times and the good times and you got to find strategies to adapt in each of those." So, yeah, that's great. Um so um let's talk about the market right now. I think obviously, you know, you spoke to how last year was. We're not going to cover that. Everybody knows that, right? Refi, refi, refi. But this, this year, um, I heard it's been, from everybody I've been talking to, it's been very hard, right? It's been hard to originate. They're actually, from what I understand, a lot of people have full fat pipelines. The problem is they can't get homes. There's no, there's no inventory. That's the, name, that's the name of the game right now, right? You probably have the same, same issue. You've got borrowers burning out and just being like, you know what, the hell with it. I'm never going to be able to buy a home right now. So something just came out in the NBA yesterday, though. Their forecast was just released, the Mortgage Bankers Association. I'm not sure if you saw this, but... They came out and they said home prices are only going to rise year over year by the end of the year by 4.8%. This year over last year was 18.8% or something like that, right? This is the creating this crazy market that we're in, right? With the low interest rates, these, these really expensive houses. When you see that kind of a forecast from like NBA and you see like it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna, to, you know, these rising interest rate market is going to tame the, the growth in prices and home values. What does that tell you? And how are you talking to your, your team, your loan, your, your, your loan officers about that? Yeah, it's a great question. So I'll start by saying this. Um, I love reading these predictions and seeing what's going on out there. Um, I don't envy people's job it is to make predictions other than the fact that, um, you know, I remember people used to make fun of weathermen because they were always wrong. I'll tell you that the weathermen are far more right than anybody who's been predicting interest rates I've ever read over the last <laughs> 10 years. And so... By comparison, like weathermen nail it, right? And so um, it's good information to have. What I will say is as a company philosophy and as a personal philosophy, I try really hard not to make predictions outside of like what I can see over the next 30, 60 or 90 days, right? Mm. So today my team is going to war to steal market share. 
right? And I don't mean, uh, the war is a terrible word to use. I won't even say that. But the game that we're playing in the field that we're playing on is there's going to be far less loans this year, four, four, billion, four trillion to 2.5 trillion. So if you figure that the market's going to be down 40%, if you want to do the same amount of business you did last year, you need to get 40% more realtors, 40% more referrals, and you need to do at least a 40% better job of the loans you have to keep that going. And so um, we did training through all the refis last year and the year before. We still did our two trainings a week on how to deliver value to realtors, how to deliver value to our customers, how to do a better job with that process. We never wavered on it. We did a ton of refis because they were there, but that wasn't what our focus was as our business. And we built up the skills that we think to provide valuable and meaningful relationships with our real estate partners so they want to choose us. Um, and so still, when we drill into, you know, we do scorecard-based activities with our sales team. I have $200 million loan officers here that are filling out scorecards every week about their activities because hmm. they're interested in seeing what works and they want to grow. And the answer is, I got to go meet five new realtors I've never met before this week. What's a, score, what's a scorecard look like? Can you tell me a little more, more, more about that? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's different for every single person, but there are some, because we, because so we have, we have our team set really big, hairy, audacious goals about what they want their lives to look like down the road. And then we have key results, which we measure quarterly, which are the things that we have to get done over this 90 days that are measurable results that are going to tell us whether or not we're on track to hit our big, big objectives. Um, and then we do weekly scorecards, which are like, okay, cool. Here are the important but non-urgent activities that I know that I need to be doing and be focused on that will lead to me being able to hit those key results that will ultimately lead to my objective. And then we spend a ton of time training on work calendar work, which is okay, how am I gonna find the time? Hmm. Do the stuff on my scorecard so that I can get to my key results so that I can get to my objectives. And we marry that together. And so all of our training here is about, hey, where am I gonna find the 10 to 12 hours a week of important but not urgent work, which is actually me building my business. And what are the skills, what's the bottleneck I'm fighting right now, which is keeping me from doing that. Because we know that if you're stressed, you stop doing your prospecting. If you're too busy, you stop doing your prospecting. If you're sick, you stop doing your prospecting. If you're having family problems, it's stuck. so like there's always a thing that's in the way. Being able to identify that and remove those obstacles um, is, is the foundation of our coaching program here. Man, Mark, you sound like an executive at, at we're a fintech SaaS company. You sound like literally like you're sitting on our leadership team. These are the same kind of conversations that we have every week. Um, and we disseminate throughout the whole organization. So you guys, some like you mentioned OKRs, objectives and key results. Yeah. We use uh, EOS. I don't know if you've heard of that before, but EOS is, I was new to it when I came here, but it's, uh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of a similar kind of, uh, kind of similar vein. Well, let's talk about what else has worked for Princeton. You mentioned a couple other things that you were doing. You want to talk about what else is really just working for you guys right now? It's the basics, right? I mean, I, I don't, again, I don't have any magic fault. I will say that the, I think the biggest advantage that, that I'm excited that we're going to have as we go forward is we built a company with a culture of radical candor and radical transparency. And, you know, we share every individual person's statistics and success with everybody else in the company every single day. If you're a processor, you're an underwriter, you're a closer, you're a loan officer, what you're doing and how you're doing it is public information. Everybody can see it. Everybody can see what your objectives and key results are and where your goals are. And so eight players thrive here. Um, because everybody knows how awesome they're doing and they love that. And B and C players, it's uncomfortable. And so they either get coached up or coached out um, because there's nowhere to hide. There's no politics. There's no managing perceptions. You can't, we've already figured out what we want to measure and we're measuring it and we're doing it in a public way. And so that allows us in a pretty drama-free way to shift course when we need to. And so um, I think the biggest thing that we're doing institutionally here is continuing to share everything that we know with everybody and giving everyone all the information so that they can be part of whatever solution is needed to whatever problem is coming up next. And so one thing they never have to hear here is if you knew what I knew, you'd understand. It's like, no, you do know what I know. And so what do you think we should do about it? And that's a much cooler conversation for me to have as a leader. Yeah, that's cool. I love that. Well, that speaks a lot to your culture, man. And I appreciate it. So um, in this in this market right now, we both know there's about like a, I don't know, high 30s uh, percent gain in the average homeowner's equity stake, right? A lot of good things you can do with that, right? What are, what are you seeing right now? Are you seeing a lot of uh, a lot of success right now with cash outs, uh, a lot of like people paying down debt, that kind of thing, maybe making an investment purchase, renovations, or is, or is most of your business predominantly like a, a primary residence, like a first home purchase? We are do we know it's not primary residence for it's it well it's eighty percent purchase ish twenty percent refi and a lot of that's cash out refi and so we are seeing those opportunities that are coming up we do use sales boomerang as a tool um, we're still 
figuring out the best way to implement it um, so that, um, you know, there's, there's a, still a cynical part of me, which is if, if something, I don't think that people, salespeople do a really good job of focusing on two things at once. And so you, you have your core model and then, assume, and then you have tertiary models, right? There's no like secondary. It's like your core and tertiary. And then I wonder if, how can you stay on top of your tertiary stuff? So I, I had an experiment. I took one of our loan officers when we first rolled out sales boomerang and I paid for it. And I was like, cool, send them all the leads and see what happens. And then at the end of the month, I went, I was like, how many leads did you call? He's like, none. I was like, that's exactly what I expected, right? It's like, these are leads coming in here, but it's not part of your core business model. I'm not going to change you. And I took another couple of officers like, okay, cool. You guys pay for it and see what happens. Suddenly they were calling all the leads. It's like, well, I, will, I want to contribute to this if I believe in it, right? At the same time, we're seeing those different behaviors. And so um, long story short, I think we probably have some work to do in terms of being able to capitalize on the cash on opportunities that are out there, both on an individual basis and as a company basis. I think we've been very focused on realtors, building relationships, getting that business in, being creative in some of those areas to do that. Um, you know, and probably other than you know, recently rolling out sales boomerang and kind of still building up our muscles around the best way to execute on that, we're not doing a ton um, to specifically look for those cash out deals, but they are showing up. Yeah. Well, so we, we've got some uh, scripting and coaching that we can, I can share with you that can really help you guys supercharge that part of the business. I definitely think there's a lot of opportunity, especially like building wealth for the borrower, building wealth for the loan officer, those kind of strategies. Um, yeah. And also, I don't know if you're taking advantage of it, but we also offer um, um, an awesome realtor program. So, you know, every one of your loan officers, if it was my company, I'd be telling them, listen, tell all your realtors you can give us the people that you have done business with before, and we'll let you know whenever they list a home, right? For example, we'll let you know, you, you, you got to do it right. You got to do it right. But there's all kinds of intelligence that you, your, your loan officers are the only ones who can actually do the, the, the credit monitoring with, uh, with sales boomerang, but um, fantastic opportunities to work with realtors. And if you're interested in that, I can definitely um, help you there. I'll give you some information on that. Yeah, that um, sounds awesome. Uh, it's a great idea. I love it. And we're always open to new ideas and how we can uh, continue to provide more value to our team. Awesome. Totally awesome. Well, look, I'm Mark, we covered a lot. Um, I just want to say thanks a lot for coming on. If somebody is listening right now and wants to connect with you, you're pretty, um, you're out there, man. I'm watching you on LinkedIn. You've got, you're more than I am. I mean, you've got a hell of an influencer presence. So people can jump on, follow you on LinkedIn. How do you want people to reach out and connect with you? They can find me on LinkedIn and my phone number is in my profile. So if you have something that you think is valuable to us or that, uh, that, you know, we can provide some value to you, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I make myself very accessible for a reason. I think it's a huge part of my job is to, to, to be on the forefront for Princeton and be somebody out there and, and communicating um, what we can do and what our plans are. And so I'm happy to, to connect with people and I'm so happy that you reached out. This has been an awesome experience. I really appreciate you having me on and uh, if there's ever anything we can do for you, let me know, but I am going to take you up on that. I'm going to have you come talk to my team about some of the ways they, uh, you can use sales boomerang if you don't mind. Heck yeah, totally. I love it. We have a, uh, my, our trainer is fantastic and our head of strategy, they do this all day long. And so, uh, you know, this is one of the things we do, right? Everybody who, uh, who works with sales boomerang, we want to make them successful. So awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Mark, thanks for a great discussion, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you like the podcast, please give us a five-star rating, subscribe, and tell all your friends about the show. We at Sales Boomerang started this podcast to elevate the mortgage lending industry by sharing the kind of exclusive insider knowledge from the successes and failures of the best of the best. The foundation of every successful lender is borrower retention. Sales Boomerang is the number one fully automated borrower retention system in the industry. One in two of the biggest lending companies in the United States use Sales Boomerang to make sure they reach out to their borrowers when they need a loan and more importantly, before their competitors do. If you want to learn more about Sales Boomerang, check us out at salesboomerang.com.